first of all, your your I suppose your gut reaction uh, to uh, what what the High Court ruled yesterday. This was unlawful. So when you were saying that again, I couldn't help but feel depressed, sad, and and actually quite angry about the situation because all of this was foreseeable. Yeah. You're right to say it was unlawful. It also said policies were irrational. And in those policies that were irrational, that like you could put people into care homes without testing. Not only that, you could actually put people into care homes with COVID. Yeah. And part of the policy was if they had PPE in place, but nobody actually checked whether that was safe. The other issue in that go in that that ruling is that one of the issues is they said, well, ministers themselves should not be held responsible because they couldn't be aware of the evidence, but they should have had advice that was keeping them up to date. And I listened to Ben Wallace this morning saying, and you should take this up with him, well, we couldn't have been aware. But let me tell you, if you've got clinical experience and expertise, everybody's aware that the elderly have atypical symptoms, often present subtly. And the idea that you take people who are potentially infectious and seed it into a care home is not just unlawful it's directly harmful and we should have known that and we should have prevented well and it's not and it's not that we should have known it we did know it i i, I, I knew i knew as early and i'm not an expert as lots of people like to point out to me on social media but back in february 2020 it was well known by then that this was a disease that hurt the elderly far more they were far more at risk uh, than people who, who were younger now you were not only just an academic you also worked in hospitals worked in any &E, uh throughout uh, the pandemic you still still do so you'd have seen what was going on and there was this panic, wasn't there? We saw the footage of what was happening in Italy, in the hospitals in the northern Italy, being overrun, absolute chaos. And it was, right, we are going to have an overwhelmed NHS. We had the ridiculous warnings from the Imperial College's uh, Professor Neil Ferguson. We were going to have 500,000 deaths. Goodness knows how many more people in hospital. And there was this, uh, just this absolute sort of, you know, absolutely running around like a, you know, like a headless chicken. We need to get all the people out of hospital who don't need to be there, and we'll just put them wherever we can put them. And of course, the reason why these people, a lot of these twenty thousand people who were sort of just start, they were, you know, they, they they were people who were in hospital because they needed to be in care home and couldn't find a place. But we've been told again and again. Matt Hancock, the health secretary, has said, look, it wasn't him. It was Public Health England that made his decision. He wasn't told. He said he'd um, he'd put a protective ring of steel around care homes. Uh, and he's also said recently that there wasn't enough testing in place for everyone to be tested. But that's not true, is there? There was the capacity to test easily this number of people. And surely testing elderly people coming out of hospital where there was lots of COVID being spread, going into care homes where the people who are most at risk from COVID live, that should have been the top priority. So you've got two very important points there is the sort of sequence that led to this modelling that catastrophically predicted we was going to be overwhelmed. We built Nightingale Hospital, went unused. While we were doing all that, we were locked down. You were locking down those who were least benefit from lockdown. We reduced the risk of the people who were the least vulnerable. At that point, while we were locked down, nearly 2,000 care homes had outbreaks. So there was something going wrong in the system. And what was happening is the testing was being diverted away from care homes to us, the general population who didn't require it. And that's been the key problem throughout this. We've tended to look after those that need it, need it the least and avoided the most vulnerable. Yeah. We should be outraged about this issue about care homes, but because most people can't see it, most people don't go in there, they're going to actually avoid it and not worry about it. And we'll worry about all sorts of little things over here. Yeah. This should be an outrage in the, in the public. And now we need legislation, I feel, to protect these people, to ensure we do no harm. Yeah, and he did. A lot of people working in care homes felt that they were the ones who were being blamed, and indeed the loved ones, the family members who were told you can't visit. And Kathy Gardner and Faye Harris, whose fathers died, again, like many, many hundreds of thousands of other families, they were banned from seeing their loved ones for those uh, many months. Um, and and, and you know, they were they were regarded as being the people who were putting their loved ones and other people in care homes at risk. As it was, it was the government. Um, this is the very first time the government has actually been held to account in the courts. We haven't you know, got the COVID inquiry up and running yet for their handling of the pandemic already people like matt hancock the then health secretary you know writing his uh, his uh, memoirs people are trying to put their side of the story i've seen this already with sir patrick valance with uh, uh professor chris witty they are you could already see people are trying to make sure they've got their their story their explanation do you think we will we will ever in this country get to grips with 
what went wrong and who was to blame. And not to play a blame game, but if we don't know how the mistakes were made and who made them, we can't make sure they're not made again. There's a certain problem with this, what we call negativity bias. If we own up to the sort of the blame and say we were responsible, the public will view us in a bad way, politicians. And therefore what happens is you pass the book. And we're going to see that now happening from Matt Hancock. We've seen it from Boris Johnson in the past. Until somebody actually starts to own up, we can't fix the problem. And to be honest, the problem is utterly insane almost. One of the issues, for instance, patients could be discharged pending a test result and isolated, yeah. but care homes were not expected to have isolation facilities. Yeah. Most don't. So, so how can you isolate somebody if you've got no facilities? Yeah. So you've got policies that are irrational and beyond irrational. And I think until, like I've said, somebody actually takes responsibility, we won't fix this problem. No, indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Always good to talk to you, Professor Carl Hennigan.